Hey, good morning. I'd like to show you a little bit about the Pro Writing Aid tool that we um, talked about in our Women in Publishing Summit. Very briefly, we, we introduced you to Pro Writing Aid as they were one of the sponsors, and I've had a chance to kind of get in and play around with it a little bit, and I want to show you how you can use the tool if you haven't already tried it out. And please remember that everyone was given a 25% code for a 25% a discount on Pro Writing Aid tool. Um, so be sure to check that out in the bonuses section. So um, I'm working on an anthology that we're getting ready to publish. And at first read through, this is a really, really well done um, uh, essay. There's not a whole lot that pops up. You can see the underlines on here. That's because I also have Grammarly um, installed on my computer which is kind of nice actually to use both of them Grammarly is a free tool up to an extent and this allows me kind of a double whammy to catch the things that um, uh, one tool doesn't catch the other tool does but the cool thing about pro writing aid is that it has a whole bunch of other options that Grammarly doesn't have Grammarly is going to catch misspelled words Grammarly is going to catch things and this sorry I apologize to my British friends and Canadian friends and other people who spell in uh, British English. That's not misspelled. That's just not American English. If I had Grammarly set to British English, UK English, it would not catch that. So I am, however, publishing this book to a largely American audience. So we have chosen to go with English US. Um, or you can also set grammar on uh, Grammarly. I mean, Pro Writing Aid, I'm sorry, on English General. So this is pretty cool. The first thing I like to do when I pull over a document is just go ahead and do an overall grammar and spell check. Um, I, I came in already in here, but if you were to go to the main Pro Writing Aid page, you would log in and then you just click on go to the editing tool and it comes to a blank document. You can either import or copy and paste your document, which is what I did before I started recording. Okay, so they've found six grammar issues um, and they highlight these for you and you can click on it, I believe, and it takes it. It doesn't take it to you, but you'll be able to see the blue underline here is... Um, is 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 going to if you highlight over that if hover over that it's going to explain to you why it's highlighted you might need a comma before this conjunction if it joins two independent clauses you can click down and it's going to explain to you what it what a coordinating conjunction is so it's kind of cool it explains to you the grammar problem which you know so we're all learning how to edit better here um, so coordinating conjunctions are used to join grammatically similar elements to nouns, to verbs, to modifiers, etc. When a coordinating conjunction is used to join two independent clauses, you should use a comma before. Okay, so um, some writers may choose to omit the comma if the two independent clauses are short and well balanced. Like, I might want to even go look up what a clause is to make sure that I'm even, <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, to go dig further to see if you, it even fits in here because you need to know what the clause is if you're trying to determine if you are uh, coordinating two independent clauses. But um, from what I remember from high school English, they're like two uh, phrases that could be independent sentences, right? So you might need a comma before this conjunction if it joins two independent clauses. And I really feel like it does. Okay, so the suggestion is if it joins two independent clauses, which independent clauses can stand alone as sentences, so we're gonna go ahead and um, take that advice. Uh, let's see, up here this is, I am now the mother of a teenager, I just think it reads better, okay. Uh, most editors will tell you you don't need these extra extra words like absolutely blah 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 unless they're really absolutely necessary for emphasis right so in this case when you're it ta when you're writing kind of familiarly like you would if you were speaking she would rather not talk to me unless absolutely necessary that's kind of a colloquialism right so it's it's an emphasis and I'm going to go ahead and ignore that because I think that it works well in this particular thing okay so we are using U.S. English. Okay, so this paragraph, this is one of those things where, uh, and you can see what the, what the, 
we can go ahead and it caught that spelling issue as well. We'll change that. Um, on the days you spend in solitary confinement by your own. Okay, I'm going to work on that sentence in a minute. Um, okay, so this particular paragraph, I'm going to show you some other options that you have with things. So we've already done the overall grammar. It's shown us what we need to do, a necessary comma before a subordinate conjunction. So I know... I want her to know that I will be there for her whether she believes it or not. So we can get rid of that comma. Okay, cool. Um, I've gone through, we're checking things, blah, blah, blah. I'll go through and do all of those. Uh, t -t 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 -t. We're going to ignore that now since we fixed it. All right, so you have the option to use a thesaurus. You have the option to uh, do different sentence lengths. You can go through and check the readability of your thing and it'll give you a report summary it's easy to read there are very there are zero very difficult um, okay so we're going to look through and see if we have overused words wow okay so look at this particular paragraph in general as I see it it's there there think there it so we're using these words a lot and it's going to show us where these all are um, and it's going to tell us that if we want a stronger paragraph we need or stronger paper we need to not be using the same words over and over and over again all right so this particular paragraph so you can go over to your thesaurus and see what happens is it going to give us options okay so it's telling us all these nouns what all the nouns are I wonder what I haven't used this before yet so I'm gonna I'm gonna click on what happens oh it just shows it okay so it's just showing us that we've used these words all the nouns that we've used and how many times we've used them so that's kind of interesting this is very eye-opening actually because nobody wants to use uh, the same word over and over and over so right now these are shown we can what happens when we do this oh cool it gives you alternatives love you could go for care for kiss cherish respect so that's kind of interesting you have those automatically want uh, call for wish need choose require that's really cool actually it can super duper help us find new uh, new words okay I want to look at this particular paragraph and I need to turn all of this stuff off because that is very distracting. Let's just go back to overused. Okay. I want to work on this paragraph. I like how she's using this description of what it feels like the life is like right now. But we see that there's a lot of these little words, it, there, and want to kind of remove those and move on here. So, um, and this isn't going to be perfect. I'm just editing off the top of my head here. But uh, we're going to say her life is now like a stage performance. At one point, I was front row center cheering her on. Um, okay, so she talks about being on the audience. While I have always been in the audience for her life performance, at one point I was front row center cheering her on now I must take a seat now I must take now I must take a seat in the back row in the back row and why I think this is redundant now because we've already talked about this In the back row okay we already got that we already got that because she no longer wants me 
visible. Now, okay, so then she says, I'm in the back row and I can barely make out what she's doing, so I have to sneak in. So maybe we say, now I must sneak in and take a seat in the back row because she no longer wants me visible. I am so far back, I can barely make out what she is doing, but I am still there. Okay, but I'm still there, there. Okay, so let's use a word, but I am still present. And I think that is what is most important. We could probably make that one sentence, but I am still present and that we don't even need think. We can just put, and I think, and that, and that is what is most important. I may not be up front cheering loudly, but I am there and she knows it. Uh, okay, so, um, but she is aware, but she is aware of my presence. And then maybe we could use a different word here than presence because we just said present there. So let's see what happens when we click on thesaurus. Does it go straight to that word? Presence. Whoops, what just happened there? I think that's because I'm not in full screen, so let's see. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, presence. Existence, it popped up super quickly. Ex okay, you just got to hover over it. Existence, behavior, personality, spirit. So obviously, um, none of those are perfect, a perfect match, but um, existence is probably... The closest to what we would want to use there, I think you can click on it and it'll feed that one in there. Yep. And she, but she is aware of my existence. She is informed of her heaven. Okay. So when you click on, on the thesaurus thing, it's going to pull up everything that you could. <laughs> this is really actually kind of cool. It can help you go through there and quickly make changes to words that you're using quite a bit. Okay. So let's see, let's turn that filter off so that we can just read that aloud. Her life is now like a, her life, I don't need now because it's always been, her life is like a stage performance. While I've always been in the audience for her performance, at one point I was front row center cheering her on. Now I must sneak in and take a seat in the back row because she no longer wants me visible. I am so far back I can barely make out what she is doing, but I am still present and this is what is most important. I may not be up front cheering loudly, but she is aware of my existence and I am there if she needs me. And I am there if she needs me. I mean, you could even you could even carry this on so far as to make that like, and I am there if she forgets a line, or I am there to prompt her with her next cue, or whatever, something like that. The point is, you can use the different tools, and it'll really help you take a paragraph that, when I first read it, I really, I mean, it wasn't a poorly written paragraph. We could have gone and made a few changes to it. I, I did make a few changes prior to when I was editing it that I undid for the purpose of this. You know, so there were a few things that I wanted to change anyway, but even I didn't notice as I was going through like how many times she used it, there, think, those types of things. So they're not super clear when you're just reading through um, if you're not an editor, right? So this is a self-editing tool and those types of things may not jump out at you like they would an editor, but that's a far better paragraph now. And it's, uh, and I was able to do it by myself as an untrained editor. And I can go through and do that entire document like that and really, really take a well-written piece and make it phenomenal. So imagine what you can do with a poorly written piece. So I give it a thumbs up. I think this tool is super duper useful and imagine once I've done that with this whole document sending it on to a professional editor how much easier it's going to be for them to complete their process and easier also means less money you spend so go check it out get your license use your code and self-edit so you can save money with the editor